Hi there and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian and today we're going to look at this HYSW 1600E electric power sweeper. So we're going to open the box, put the contents on the table so you can see exactly what you get and then we'll go through the assembly. So I've laid the contents out on the table as you can see. First of all we have the head unit itself and it does come with the upper handle already attached via the cabling. As you can see, it's all one piece. So I've lifted this carefully out of the box in one piece. Then we have two lower handles here, which are straight bars with the circles on the bottom. We have the middle bar, as you can see here, which is the hoop shape. Two bags of assorted fastenings. We will be using those a little later. We have the grass bag or collection bag, I should say, here, which, which needs a little bit of assembly. We shall go through that. And then finally we have the user manual. Now I do recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use. So there are two lower handles. They are identical. It doesn't matter which one goes on which side. So you'll see these large black hand wheels of which there are two. One goes on the left, one on the right. So you'll see these little arrow indicators and little alignment marks on the top. Now it doesn't matter where you put them, but as you can see or appreciate, you can put this lower handle at various heights. And what happens, these little serrations will pick up so that you can lock the handle in the most comfortable position for yourself. So I'm just gonna line up these top two just to get somewhere even. Then I'll fit the hand wheel. There we are, and just screw it into place. So when I fit one on the other side, I'll make sure that my notches line up on this longest mark here. So I can go to my second bag now, various bits and bobs in here. I'll just put them all on the table. So in the second bag, you'll find these silver bolts and little blue thumb screws. Um, I have removed the previous three, but just remove them. And you'll see under the head, they have a square section under the round head. So what we need to do is when we look at our tube here, you'll see that there's a square hole in this tube. I can pass the bolt through and just remember on the inside it stops it rotating to line up the square so it'll just drop let me see there we are drops into the hole so this is the point where I can lift the handle up put the middle handle inside the upper handle and then fasten on just loosely for now one of the hand wheels so I'll just come to the other side you may be able to see this better. I'll just pass the bolt through the two holes, make sure we line up the square, it pops into the hole, and then put the other hand wheel on. A little bit more of that one now, and it will click into place. We don't want them over tight, but it will be locked rigid. So that's the low handles, and the middle handle fastened to the lower handles. Okay, so at this point, exactly the same method. I'll just put the screw through. I'm holding up the upper handle. Let me just line the holes up. In with the bolt, make sure the square's lined up. The square stops the screw rotating. Just get that one in. Now there are little notches in these. As you tighten, they'll click. There we go. That should do for that one. So before I fit the last bolt, I'm just gonna take this plastic clip slide it up onto the handle, line it back up. Now I'm taking care not to trap any cables here. Okay, put the last bolt in and tighten up the final hand wheel. There we go. So this unit here is a cable tidy. We'll show you that next. So if you get caught or get the cable caught on anything, it's not going to pull the cable out of the controller. So if I just take a loop of this cable, I can feed it through that lower wide loop, put it over the hook, just pull it down, and that basically relieves the strain. So any pull is now pulling on this wire itself, which is far stronger than the connection at the top. So that's the cable, nice and tidy there, and the strain will be relieved. So the last component in the bag is this cable tidy or cable clip, and it does have the Allen key in it. We'll show you what that's used for shortly. So we can pass it over the lower handle here, okay? And that just keeps the cable out here, out of the way of the collection bag. Let's look at the debris collection bag. 
So you'll see these little half round channels all around the outside here. One here, one here, same the other side, and the one across the front. These loop over the bars. So if I just start with the lower one, so you can see, I'll just start one end, just hook it, just hook it onto the bar all the way along. So if I start one end, you can normally just speed it along. Here we are, that's that one. Let's see if I can bring it over here so you can see again. I'll just start one end, hook that one on, and again here. Pretty straightforward. And these are obviously taken off to make it far easier to pack in the uh, packaging. Okay, there we are. That's the assembly of the debris collection bag. Okay, let me just show you how to fit the bag. You'll see on the bag there are these two metal bars here. These are what latch it into the back of the machine. So I can lift up the rear and you'll see these two shelves here, one either side, like hooks. So we simply offer the bag up, hook the bars onto the hooks, shut the lid, and that's how you fit the bag. Obviously, when you need to empty it, just lift the flap, lift the bag. You can empty the bag, put it back on again. So let's look at the controls on this machine. It has a single point height adjuster. Now, as you can imagine, let me just show the underside. We have this rotating sweeping brush. Okay, so with that said, what we're doing by this height adjuster, as you can see, is we're raising the front wheels. And by doing so, we're lowering the brush. So it has one, two, three, four, five positions in total. If we put it right down there, we're pushing the brush hard into the surface that we're brushing, and that would take stubborn leaves, wet leaves, that sort of thing that may be on the floor, ideally not wet, but it will, it will get right down to the surface. And obviously, varying amounts, we can come back up by, when we come back up to this rear one, the brush is now away from the surface by about six millimeters. So I've plugged the unit in now, I've got it on its highest setting so that I'm not trying to sweep my workbench. If I pull the handle, nothing happens. If I push the button and pull the handle, the motor will start. I shall demonstrate and then I'll let go of the handle and it will stop. As you can see, it won't start again unless I push the button first. So we did touch on the Allen key earlier on. It does store nicely in this little clip and it's by here. I'll show you what it does. It's used for changing the roller should you need to change the brush head or if you want to clean it out you can also use it. So I've unplugged the unit from the mains, that's most important, so we're not plugged in at all. So if I flip the unit over on its side, obviously it's in a safe condition now because it hasn't got the, uh, any power going to it. So the, the sweeping roller is here and the Allen key fits this Allen bolt here. So I can undo it, just get it started long ways, use the short way of a key. I can fold that out like a little hinge, pull the roller out, lift it up, and out comes the roller. So if you want to replace the roller, that's how you remove it. We can then clean it, sometimes you can pick up bits of string, wire, something like that, and you'll need to remove the roller to clean it properly. And of course this gives you access to the underside to clean that out as well. So to refit it, again, there's a bearing one end, which is this top end. And the bottom end has a square socket. And you'll see a square drive in the bottom here. Obviously, we'll just drop it in. Line up the square drive with a square socket. Sometimes you've got to rotate it a few degrees. Let me just look where I am. There we are. Dropped it down into place. In the bearing in this little groove. Fold the lid shut, and then with the Allen key, re-tighten up the Allen bolt. So can I just reiterate here, whenever you're working on the underside of the unit, do disconnect the unit from the mains, remove the plug, so that there's no danger of anything starting up when you're underneath your machine. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. For more information on this or any of our other products, visit www hyundaipowerproducts.co.uk I've been Adrian and thank you for watching.